Hey guys, summer is finally here. It's a great time to get out and shoot. And I know what everybody's thinking. What does Eric have in his camera bag this summer? Well, you're in luck because we're going to dive in today. I'm going to show you what I'm carrying around and how I am meaner and leaner than I've ever been before. So let's jump in. I'm going to put links in the description below to all the reviews that we've done of all this stuff and also to the Amazon pages where you can find this stuff if you want to check it out. But this is all stuff I'm using consistently all the time. Highly recommend this stuff. So let's run through. You're gonna see that I'm not really carrying around as much stuff as I've been before. Partly because I'm shooting with the Canon R5 in the Canon R system, and Canon's been really slow to roll out new RF lenses, and the third party uh, manufacturers also have been really slow getting these RF lenses out. So I've been kind of eliminating stuff that I don't really think I need anymore that camera hasn't re Canon hasn't replaced yet in a new system. So. You know, I'm finding if I have a 24 and a 50, I really don't need a 35. And when that Canon 35 1.2 finally comes on the market, I don't know that I need that. I have a 50 and a 135. I'm not using the Canon 85 or another brand of 85 at all because it's just right between those two lenses. So I've really cut back what I'm carrying around. Uh, so let me just show you what I have. Using, as I said before, the Canon R5. Um, absolutely wonderful camera. I've had it for three years, shortly after it came out. I mean, it's almost time for a Canon R5 Mark II or whatever's gonna be next Canon. This is the cheapest lens I've probably ever used. Uh, TT Artisan's 7.5 millimeter F2 fisheye lens. It's an APS-C lens, which means on a full frame camera like the R5, you're gonna get a completely round image with black around the edges. Uh, so when I shoot with this in order to compose, I switch the view to the uh, 1.6 crop mode so that I can actually frame it better because that's what I'm going to end up cropping to after the fact anyway. Uh, but it's very, very awesome whether I want a fisheye effect or I want to correct the effect in Lightroom and just use it kind of as a super wide angle lens. 150 bucks. It's, it's really top notch. Uh, so for my super wide angle and fisheye sometimes uses, I'm using this TT Artisan's 7.5 millimeter F2 lens. Moving on from there, my old trusty 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. This is the Canon EF 24 millimeter tilt shift version two. I've had it for several years. Uh, it's always in my bag. Whenever I don't bring it with me somewhere, I regret not bringing it. Uh, but this is my 24 millimeter lens. I'm not using anything else. I don't have a 24 millimeter 1.4 anymore. Uh, this serves as my standard wide angle lens, 24 millimeters, and I love how you can use all of the tilt shift effects. I'll put uh, links to the tilt shift videos that I've done on this uh, so you can really see how this effect works, but at 24 millimeters, this is what I'm using. Going on from there is the lens that is on my camera all the time, my standard 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. It's the Canon RF. It is Probably the best lens I've ever used. Uh, I love the normal focal length of 50 millimeters. I love the super wide aperture of 1.2. It balances perfectly with this camera. The RF lenses work amazingly with the R system cameras. Uh, I, that's why this is always on my camera. Uh, this, if I have to go out and only bring one lens with me, this is the lens I'm bringing, 50 millimeter 1.2. The newest member of the family, and when I said this is probably the best lens I've ever used, the 50 millimeter 1.2, is now the Canon 135 millimeter f1.8 lens, uh, which might be the best lens I've ever used. I, for decades, had the Canon EF 50, 135 millimeter f2 lens, which was my favorite lens. Uh, I got this and quickly replaced that lens with this. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, and the fact that it's 1.8 gives you a little bit more width on the aperture than the F2 version. Uh, it's it's just amazing. So I'll go out sometimes with just this and the 24 millimeter to kind of give me both ends of the spectrum there. Um, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. 135 millimeter F1.8 from Canon. And the long end, which doesn't isn't necessarily in my bag, but it's on my person somewhere, whether it's hanging independently from a belt strap or in a, a separate bag is the old Canon EF 300 millimeter F 2.8. Uh, this is version one. Uh, this is the original 
absolutely fantastic lens. I've, like we've done reviews on this, there's nothing more that I can say that it's absolutely amazing. It fits a nice balance between, it's not a ridiculously huge lens. I know it looks big, but you've seen the 400 millimeter, the 600 millimeter, they're just giant lenses. It looks like you're carrying around a bazooka. This is a big lens, but it's not ridiculously big. I know that sounds weird. Um, it's heavy, it's big, but it's not like absurdly big. So you can kind of go around using this handheld. It's not a big deal. Uh, those are the lenses that covers from fisheye to 300 millimeters. Um, at 300 millimeters, I don't necessarily need, I'm not shooting birds on from a distance. Uh, I don't necessarily need the super reach. Sports, this is adequate for most sports. And at 45 megapixels on the Canon R5, you can crop, it's not a big deal. Uh, so for someone who's not really necessarily shooting long distance, this is a great focal length. It really gives you a nice telephoto compressed look. Uh, and at 2.8, it's nice to be able to shoot wide open like that. So other things that I have, uh, a flash, I have uh, the Canon 600, whatever it's called, uh, flash, the big one. Uh, which if I'm shooting portraits, I'll use that sometimes. But what's in my bag all the time is the 270EX2. It's this big, I've done a video on it, you can check it out. And I mean, it's just, it's just enough if you wanna be able to pop a little bit of light into your subject's face or whatever your subject is. If you wanna be, be able to pop a little bit of light into the scene, uh, it's, it's super small and lightweight and you could just stick it in your bag, you don't even know it's in there. Um, oh, this is kind of lenses, uh, extension tubes. I have the Canon RF extension tubes, 12 millimeters and 25 millimeters. I just kind of hold them, attach them together in my bag. There's no glass in here. Uh, basically, this just moves your lens a little bit further away from the camera in, in order to allow you to shoot uh, at a shorter distance. So if normally you're trying to shoot something that's small and you want to get close up to it, and you can only get like a foot away and you can't really get close enough, put one of these between the lens and the camera and you'll be able to get like, sometimes like, a millimeter away, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't really shoot macro close-up stuff that much, but these are super lightweight, inexpensive, and small, and just throwing them in the bottom of the bag, uh, it, just to have it in there, so extension tubes for that. Filters, I have a full set of circular polarizer filters. I have the full set of ND filters, neutral density filters, which will block the light, allow me to shoot at longer uh, shutter speeds. And I have those in a three stop, a six stop, and a 10 stop, uh, all at 82 millimeters, which is my widest uh, size that I need. And I have a step up ring for the 77 to go from 77 to 82. Uh, and that basically covers all of my neutral density needs. Other than that, just the basics, cleaning things. I always have a little microfiber cloth, a little bit of spray, which I rarely, almost never use unless it gets really dirty and I can't get it off by using just the lens pen. The lens pen, I always have a couple of these with me. Uh, real basic, has a brush on one side and a little charcoal tip on the other. You can get almost anything off any of your lenses uh, using just this. So I definitely always have one of these with me. I always have a cable release. I think I have one of those Bluetooth release buttons somewhere also. Uh, I just never use it. I'm never that far away from my camera where I need uh, need to be that far away. So anytime I'm shooting anything where I'm using a long, long exposure, uh, where I don't, don't want to touch the camera where it's going to shake, or I want to be able to hold my exposure down for a certain period of time, cable release for that also. And just the basic kind of things you carry around. I have a headlamp that I use anytime I'm shooting at night. This is from Bushnell. Uh, it's got a setting where you basically have your light, three different brightnesses. And then there's another setting here where you can have just a red light a blue light, and then a small white LED light. And that's great, that red light is great for when you're shooting at night and you don't wanna brighten up your scene. Uh, it's just enough for you, you to be able to see what's right in front of you. It's like working in a dark room. So that's my camera bag. That's everything that I have, including the bag. And if you have any questions, like I guess that all this stuff is gonna be at the end um, of the video down below. You can check out all the links to the stuff. Scroll through the channel, look through all of the videos we've done, you'll see links to you'll see videos for all these things we've done reviews of all of this stuff so check that stuff out thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time